So today is the next video in our series looking at the Fronius Watt Pilot Go Smart Solar Portable EV SE. Commonly known as an EV charger, this is a great little device and today we're going to have a look at plugging it in, also setting it up to charge on solar only, some of the other charging options that's provided with it, some screen shots of the charging and the capability of the EV SE, and also how much charge it puts into the car on a warm, sunny Queensland day. So stay with us. Hi everyone, my name's Greg and welcome to Electric Car Australia, the Aussie YouTube channel for those wanting to learn a little bit more about electric cars and sustainable living technologies. Well, you'll notice I'm got my Harry Styles Bunnings hat on today. Unfortunately, the older Cobra had to rest in peace and I haven't replaced it yet. So we've got a warm, sunny Queensland day today. We're heading for a top of 33. So I needed the hat to provide the shade. Before we get into it, just like to thank my new Kofi supporter, Ken K. Thanks very much. Ken K's came on board as a Kofi supporter on $1.99 per month membership. And also my longtime supporter Di via Patreon, also on a monthly membership. If you would like to join those guys and get some extra lurks and perks, check out the supporter links below. And if you're new to the channel, please click that subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you're notified of all of our new videos. And I'd also like to thank Fronius who did provide this charger for research and design and testing purposes. Um, but please rest assured today's video will be a warts and all uh, review and discussion on it. Um, so as with all my videos, I do provide independent advice in the real world. So as we mentioned, today's video is going to focus mainly on the capabilities of this EVSE, which as I mentioned, most people call a charger, but it is the correct term is actually electrical vehicle, electric vehicle supply equipment. Should get that right. Um, we will focus mainly on the uh, solar charging today. However, we'll have a brief chat about some of the other functionality and capabilities um, of the charger. So let's get into it. So if you'd like to know some more details on what comes in the box with this product and some of the uh, more technical capabilities of it, I'll put a link up above to uh, that previous video. But basically, um, when you start using this, your installer will have configured it, commissioned it. If there's any firmware updates, they will have run all those for you. What they may not have provided is an adapter lead. So depending on your installation and your um, energy supply, these guys come standard with the EVSE, hold that up a bit higher, and a short about 30 centimeters, 12 inch lead, and a five pin three phase plug. So as most of my regular viewers will know, we're only on single phase supply here. So this is a three pin single phase 32 amp outlet. So to use it, I need to use this adapter lead. So that changes from five pin three phase into single phase three pin. Now we'll talk about some of the pros and cons and benefits of this little unit later, but what I do like, it's just so easy to mount. So um, we've done a previous video on the install of this, but it's literally got some little slots on the back. You've got a base plate that screws to your wall and you can buy multiple of these. So if you've got multiple locations, um, you can have multiple of these plates and then you can just flip it on. So putting it to the wall is as simple as lining it up, sliding it down, it's locked in place. Depending on your install, you'll have a bit of a clip there to take the weight of the cable. We get our three pin um, 32 amp socket in my case, or plug I should say. I lift up my um, protective cover, put that in. Now these are industrial plugs and they're designed to take very high current. So you do need a bit of effort and I always recommend that you actually do up the locking ring. So there's a little ring on the side of the, um, the plug. Do that up nice and tight and that stops it accidentally coming out or somebody pulling it out while it's on full load. Because believe me, you do not want to disconnect these things when they're on full load. So there we go, the EVSE or the chargers mounted on the wall. You've got it plugged in to your socket. At this point, do not turn it on. So leave it turned off. 
You'll notice with these guys, and we'll talk a bit more about this later, there's no lead connected. So there's your outlet. It's a standard uh, Type 2 outlet there. So what you need is a Type 2 lead to plug into this so that you can connect it to your EV. So here we are. This is a Type 2 to Type 2 lead, and I'll just show you both ends. So that is a Type 2 male, and that's the smaller end. So that's the end that actually goes into the charger. So let's put it in now. Let's lift the flap and that just pushes straight in. Now there's no lock, you won't hear anything. That just pushes in so I can put that in and out because we haven't energized it. So there's no little locks that have gone on. There we go. So we're starting to get the process happening. The other end of my lead, again, because I've got an MGZS, we use a type two connection. So there's the end that plugs into the car. So that's a larger end. So one end's a small end, the male end, that goes into your charger. The larger socket goes into your car. Okay, so here we are down at the business end at the car. So the MG got a center uh, flap, we pop that up. We've got our type two bung down there. So we take that type two bung out. Apologies guys, you probably can't see that very well. Get my Type 2 plug straight in, push it in nice and firmly. That's it, done and dusted for the car. Now what I will say is it's always a good idea to put your charge lead so that it's not in coils. Because again, the high current that these devices are taking, um, the less coils and stuff, the better. So just to recap on plugging in, it's always a good idea to do it in that sequence. So what I would always normally do is mount the charger on the wall, plug in the plug into your uh, power point or your outlet, but don't turn it on. Plug your lead into the charger and then finally plug it into the car. So at this point, everything's connected, but nothing's energized. So there's no communication between the car or the charger because you've still got this mains power turned off. So at this point, I'll whack a couple of screenshots up there of the car. So the state of charge of the car, we're at about 48% there. And it'll also show you some temperatures of the battery coolant, etc. So just out of interest, if you wanna know um, what that looks like in our MG while it's charging. And of course, keep in mind, all modern uh, EVs have uh, liquid cooled uh, chargers in the car and also batteries. So that just gives you a little bit of an idea of the temperature of the battery while you're charging. And at this point, I should also mention that these are a level two AC charger. So we're not talking about DC, the rapid chargers that you find out on the highways, etc. If you want to know a little bit more about those, we've done multiple videos on those and I'll include the links in the show notes. But this is a home charger, level two, and this particular one is a maximum of 22 kilowatts. And again, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. So now the fun starts, so let's get it underway. So the next thing you do then is turn your socket on. So this will energize the whole system. You guys probably won't hear it, but the little locks will come on. So there's a lock, an electronic lock that'll come on at the charger here that'll lock this in so you can't pull it out. And there'll also be a lock come on at the car. Now at this point, I would also recommend that you always have your EV turned off or shut down because some EVs will not initiate a charge if the EV's turned on. So again, make sure the EV's turned off. And if you keep a close eye, I'm hoping you guys can see the little rainbow LEDs that'll light up around this charger. Again, you can see this more clearly in a separate video we've done on the install of this product. However, when we turn it on, it'll start to communicate with the car. It'll do a self-check sequence and we should get some um, LEDs lighting up there. You'll notice this product doesn't have a screen. So all the controls are via this little button here on the unit itself or via the app. So let's turn it on. There we go, we've got the rainbow LEDs lighting up. I did just hear the little lock and you'll hear a fan in the background. That's my uh, Fronius solar PV inverter. They're quite noisy, these older model Fronius inverters, unlike the new Gen 24 models that are a lot quieter. 
Um, and as I mentioned, we've got a very clear, hot uh, day today. So the old inverter beside us is working quite hard. So there we go, the little rainbow lights have uh, finished. We've got a solid white light at the top with a little leaf. So I'll put a couple of screenshots as to what they mean. But basically, that leaf there is telling us we're on eco mode. So this product has three modes, a standard mode, an eco mode, and a next trip mode. And the EVSE has done its thing, it's communicated to the car, and it is now charging. So hopefully you guys can see those little blue LEDs running around the charger there, or the EVSE socket. Um, so that's telling us we're charging, and we're charging with solar only. So that's excess solar. Um, so what we're not using in the house, the car is now consuming. So what I'm doing now, I'm just gonna take a screenshot from our Fronius uh, solar PV app for the history of today. So what that's gonna show is the usage or consumption of our house of energy today, and also the excess solar that's being pumped into the grid. So I'm gonna take a screenshot of that now. And what that'll do is that'll show you guys at the point where we plugged in. So we've got a eight kilowatt inverter here. In Queensland, we have a five kilowatt export limit. So basically anything that we generate over and above five kilowatts is wasted. But what you'll find today, now that we've plugged this in, it will suck everything that we can produce and pump it into the car. So that's everything that's excess to what we're using in the house. So if we've got the microwave running and all that sort of stuff, it'll serve that first. And then anything over and above that, it'll put into the car. And towards the end of the video, we'll come back and I'll do another screenshot, which will clearly show you over the couple of hours that we were charging, how much energy we put into the car. And also it'll show just how close this product maps the excess solar. So if a cloud comes over, which I don't think it's gonna to happen today. It is an absolutely perfect blue sky day. But if a cloud was to come over and the PV generation drops, this charger drops as well. So that curve follows really, really closely. So unfortunately, we probably won't be able to show how that works today because there's no clouds. So there we go, in that screenshot, you'll see that we were basically hitting our five kilowatt feed-in limit for the day. So we weren't using much power in the house. It was pumping up to five kilowatts into the grid and anything over and above that five was wasted. So basically the three kilowatts between five and eight, the capacity of our inverter was wasted. Whereas once I show a screenshot later on, after a couple of hours of charging, you'll clearly see that that excess energy, including the five kilowatts that was going to the grid, is now going into the car. So as I mentioned, you can control this device via this little button here, which is quite simple. So if you've got no internet, if you've got no Fronius solar gear, so basically no Fronius inverter or smart meter or anything like that, one of the beauties of this product is you can take it on the road, plug it into any three phase five pin outlet, or for that matter, any other outlet if you've got the correct adapter lead and by the way i'll put a link in the show notes below to a, a great company that makes all these sorts of leads up custom made um, electro traders here in brisbane so check their website out if you do need one of those leads but basically you can plug in anywhere you don't need any fancy smarts and you can control this device with the button so you don't even need a mobile phone you don't need an internet connection or anything so you can set the different modes so between the three standard eco or next trip via this button you hold it for about half a second or you press it for about half a second each and it will cycle through those three modes once you've set the mode then if you hold the button in for about two seconds it will cycle through the amperages this charger can set at 10 amps so exactly the same as your normal power point hold it for two seconds it'll go to 16 amps 20 amps 24 amps and 32 amps now keep in mind Again, that single phase or three phase. So if you've got a three phase connection, you can set the unit to 32 amps across the three phases and that'll give you 22 kilowatts of charge. Keep in mind that's if your 
electric car can take that amount of charge. Our MG can only take seven kilowatts. So this unit is a bit of overkill for us for what our car can take. However, it future proofs us for any later bigger capacity EVs we've got. And it's also relatively good value for money anyway, because you're getting the maximum size charger you can get for similar sort of prices to the lower powered ones. So to summarize that at 32 amp single phase, this charger will give about 7.36 kilowatts and set at 32 amps on three phase will give you 22 kilowatts. So now let's talk about the app. So as I mentioned, it has a great app that also um, you can download and use with the unit. It's called the Solar Watt Pilot app. I'll put a link in the show notes. Now it is a separate app to the uh, Fronius inverter in the solar PV system. I mentioned that in another video. Fronius have made the choice to have two separate apps so that it's not busy. Um, so there's pros and cons in that, but just be aware you do need to download a separate app and you can get that from your Apple or Android store. So when I went to open the app up and get some screenshots today, it popped up and it said the unit was due for a firmware update. So that's the great thing about these internet enabled chargers. So you're getting software upgrades all the time that's free of charge. So I've initiated that. The app doesn't operate while it's doing a uh, firmware update. So the communication must get turned off. Um, so if you can see that we've got little LEDs going around there, they're yellow and it's showing that it's doing a firmware update. So keep in mind that's really easy. So as an end user, if your installers install the unit and off they go and you're just using it normally, it's as easy as it pops up. It says, would you like to apply this firmware update? Yes or no, away it goes, does it itself. So there we go, in that app screenshot, you'll see on the power tab that it's putting in 6.9 kilowatts. So as I mentioned, that's the maximum we can put in. Um, it's been going for three minutes because believe it or not, my internet's been dropping in and out here. So I was stopping it and restarting it and stuff to try and get that going. So normally that would not happen. Um, it's showing it's in eco mode there. We've got it set at 32 amps maximum and 6 a.m. That's if I was setting it to start charging at 6 a.m., which is at the moment disabled, but I have used that in the past. Um, again, status there charging with 6.9 kilowatts and it's telling us that that is PV surplus. So that seven kilowatts is all coming free from my solar PV system. So we're not pulling anything from the grid. It's saying down in the next little section that it's adding 38.5 kilometers of charge per hour. So again, if that was putting in only four kilowatts, that figure there would change and fluctuate. Um, but I know over the next couple of hours here with a clear blue sky, uh, middle of the day in Brisbane, I'm gonna be putting in about 38 kilowatts for every hour the cars are plugged in. Now the other couple of figures there, I don't worry too much about. Um, the one at the bottom there is a cumulative figure um, between resets and the other one range. You can put settings in there for the consumption of your individual car. Um, but again, I don't go into that much detail. I just like to know that I'm putting in 38 kilometers an hour of um, range or charge and that's all I use it for. So on the next tab in the app there, the details tab, you'll see that it um, puts similar sort of information up on the screen there. So we've got uh, zero kilowatts coming out of the house. Now what that'd be if I had a battery on the house, which I don't, um, so that's zero obviously. The um, sun figure there, that's coming from our solar. So we've got about 6.9 kilowatts again coming from there. And we've got zero coming from the grid. And again, it shows our eco, the current we're putting in and that timer. So down below that, it says the surplus PV available is 7.6. So that um, again shows that we're generating 7.6. We're putting seven into the car and we're using six, uh, 100 watts or 0.6 kilowatts in the house. Um, the Watt Pilot's power output is 6.9 and the charging cable connected is a 32 amp type 2. So the unit will detect the power cable it's included or attached into it. Now there is another tab on there called the forecast tab. Now unfortunately in Australia that capability isn't usable at the moment. We don't have any 
energy retailers um, that are part of that system and we also don't have a live connection to any weather forecasting uh, features within the Fronius app. So we'll talk shortly about some of the other integrations you can do but just quickly I'll put one more screenshot of the app in there and that's the settings section. So as you can see there's lots and lots of different settings that we can go into there. Now we won't do those today, we'll do those in a separate video when we look at next trip mode and standard mode etc. Um, as I mentioned today we're really only looking at the, the solar mode um, but I'll just put it in there for your information. So we've talked about this being part of the actual overall Fronius um, solar PV ecosystem but as I mentioned there's integrations that can happen with this system if you don't have a Fronius solar system. So let's say you've got uh, SunGrow or SMA or one of those other um, inverters and, and systems you can still integrate this unit into that. Now one of the ways you can do that is by purchasing the Fronius data manager and Fronius smart meter so basically they go in your meter box they're additional things that would um, connect onto your existing non-Fronius solar system but to be honest they're probably an expensive way to go um, so lots and lots of people have been testing this with the home assistance now this is way outside my league there's a lot of people that do this stuff way better than me but from what I'm told it is a cheap option. Home Assist adds a lot of other features and functionality not just to solar and EV charging but you can turn air conditioners on and off and all that other stuff. So if you're interested in that I really recommend that you go and have a look at that Home Assist setup and for a couple of hundred dollars I believe this can be integrated into that and it will provide you more functionality over and above what the standard Fronius app and system does so if you are into that whole home assistance setup maybe go and check that out and I'll put a link in the show notes to uh, a gentleman who's a fellow member of the Australian Electric Vehicle Association here in our Queensland branch Chris Cathcart now he's done a lot of work and he's posted some really good stuff in Facebook so I'll put a link in the show notes for that if you're interested in home assistance and that integration go and check Chris's notes out. And the other part is OCPP integration or open charge point protocol. So that's an application protocol um, for communication between electric vehicle charging stations and central management systems. So similar to the home assist type stuff. So again if you're a techie sort of guy or girl and you're into that programming type stuff uh, this has that functionality so you'll be able to incorporate that into whatever you're building. So what are the benefits of the Fronius Watt Pilot? So for me there's two different models. There's a home model. So the home model doesn't have the plug on the end so it just has a cable and your installer will mount it permanently in your home and doesn't um, go anywhere. This is the Go model. As I mentioned, it's a portable model. It has the plug on it. For all intents and purposes, they're exactly the same units except for the um, termination or the, the plug on the end. So I think the overall benefits of these units is they're Wi-Fi enabled. So you don't need to run permanent LAN or network cables. So that can make your installation a little bit easier. We've already talked about the firmware upgrades, so you've got over-the-air software upgrades. So as Fronius is further developing this out, they'll be pushing out software updates. And as I mentioned, um, they've recently launched this in Australia. They've provided some of these units to EV drivers and YouTubers like myself to provide feedback, and they're actively continuing to upgrade this um, product. So that software, upgrade and updates is an advantage. It's a solar app and all protection included. So basically when you buy it you get the unit, you get access to the app obviously and all the protections are built into this so there's no more um, protections etc that your electrician needs to install in your um, switchboard. So that makes the install again a little bit simpler and cheaper. Besides a standalone uh, circuit breaker, earth leakage breaker, which they'll need to put in for any of these types of units, everything else is built into the unit. So that's a big benefit. One of the other benefits which I believe is unique to this product is its phase shifting and load balancing. Now we won't get into too much of that in this video because it's probably a bit technical. 
but I will put a couple of screenshots up there. Basically what the phase shifting means is if you've got a three phase system, when the sun first comes up in the morning and you don't have a lot of energy from your PV, the system will kick off in single phase mode. So it'll maximize the amount of that solar that it can use in single phase when the sun is low in the sky in the morning and also in the afternoon. But once that sun ramps up, it'll automatically kick into three phase mode so it can start to suck the maximum amount of energy from your PV system. Now there's some other systems that are capable of doing single and three phase, but I believe all of those are a manual adjustment. So you need to manually switch them between single phase and three phase. This unit, it's a set and forget. You're in bed asleep or you're away at work in the afternoon and the unit itself is automatically shifting between those phases to maximize your energy from your solar PV. So that's a big benefit. The other one is load balancing. So this won't apply to many people, but if you do have two or three of these units, you've got um, multiple EVs at home maybe, maybe you're a large family, mum and dad have got their EV plugged into uh, the first charger. The teenage kids have got their car plugged into the second charger. The kids don't need their EV until later in the uh, day. Mum and dad need theirs within a couple of hours. You can set these units to prioritize the first car and then anything extra goes to the second car. Or you can balance it equally across the lot. So if you've got uh, an infrastructure restriction coming into your property, um, so there's a limitation on the amount of uh, energy or the size of your uh, main fuse, you can have two or three EVs plugged in and you can limit the um, the charge to all of those to make sure you stay underneath uh, that maximum current for your property. So again, a little bit technical, but if you're into that stuff, there's a couple of screenshots there that'll give you some info, and I recommend that you go and do some more digging on that if that's of interest. I will attach a link to the operational manual, the full operational manual for this. So if that is of interest, you can click on that and go and do some more research. So the part I like about this Go model, so the portable model, so it obviously has all the features that I've just mentioned um, with the added benefit that you can take it when you travel. So you've seen how easy it was to plug in, you unplug it, you throw it in the boot of the car and off you go. With your various leads that you might get made up, you can have various connections to different sockets. However, I believe the majority of people using this to travel, particularly in regional areas, will just need the five pin three phase plug, which comes with it, with it as standard. So if you're in a little small town and there's no EV charges, if you have a look around uh, for some sort of company business, a little industrial estate, um, maybe a cattle sale yards, a showground, any of those sort of places generally have three phase power available. Have a chat to the people there, plug this in, Bob's your uncle, you'll get seven kilowatts, 11 kilowatts or 22 kilowatts, depending on what your EV is capable of doing and the network that is um, available where you're plugged in. So this charger can do all those. As mentioned, the other good thing is that you don't need Wi-Fi. So if you're in an area that's got really poor reception or your phone goes flat or whatever it is, you can still control and use this without any Wi-Fi manual type process. So that's really great. Another thing is too, because it doesn't come with a lead. Now, some people would say that that's um, a disadvantage you need to buy a lead separately but most EV drivers will already have one of these leads or will get one of these leads because you can use these at AC destination charges in shopping centers and cinemas and that sort of stuff so I'd argue that most people would buy one of these leads anyway the beauty of it is that this can work on a type 2 vehicle which is the most common EVs now around the world or a Chatamo connection so if you've got a Japanese EV uh, a Nissan, Mitsubishi, that sort of thing. You can have a type two lead at this end to plug into the charger, and you can have a Chatamo at the other end to plug into your vehicle. So therefore this charger with the correct lead can do type two cars or Chatamo cars.
And finally, I mentioned it before that it's portable, but another big advantage is that this is great for renters or people that need to have their charger in multiple locations. So if you're renting a property and you want a little bit more control over the charging of your EV rather than just having it plugged into a power point, you can install this in a rental property. So again, you would just have the uh, lead made up for depending on what you wanted. You can plug this unit into a normal 10 amp power point. However, if you've got a really generous landlord or you know the landlord, in some circumstances, you might be able to install a socket like this right near the power board. Now your landlord might ask you to pay for it, but this would be a really fairly cheap and economical way to add a home charger like this the closer you put it to your power board or the rental property's power board, the better because the cheaper it'll be. Um, but this would add value to the landlord's property and it allows you to use this to its maximum capacity. So yeah, really great idea for renters. And if you've got a property where you need to have these in multiple places, for instance, this is in my driveway, it's outside, it's beside the house. I could put another one of these mounting plates that I showed you guys at the start of the video in my shed down the back and providing I've got electricity to it I can move the charger from here and I can mount it down in my shed so again a great idea these portable ones you can have multiple mounting points and you can move them around so there's a couple of things if you're considering one of these you should be aware of as we've said, this is a 22 kilowatt three phase charger at its maximum capacity, but it can do everything below that. And the primary two things that'll determine that is your vehicle's capability. So what is the maximum charge the vehicle will accept in AC charging? As mentioned, ours the MG is seven kilowatts. And what is the maximum uh, capacity or amperage you can get from your supply system in our case single phase 32 amps so just be aware depending on your individual situation you will maybe not be able to use the full capability of this unit another thing I'll mention is some of the direct competition for these guys so I guess probably the best known one is Zappy so uh, that's uh, been in the market now for a couple of years also a good product um, it has a little bit of trouble with heat sometimes. Um, in a future video, I will be testing this one and putting it under some pressure with, with heat. Also the Smappy. So Smappy is probably the more premium one, bit higher priced than this, um, and has a bit more integrated home assistance functionality in it. But they're probably the two main ones that people talk about when they're comparing this sort of Solar Smart EV charger. So to wrap up, what are the pros and cons of this unit? So I'd say the pros are it's unique in some of its functionality. So we talked about that phase uh, shifting capability, that auto phase shifting, and also the um, dynamic demand um, capabilities. It's portable again, which I really like. I've banged on about that heaps of times, but for me, that's uh, probably the single best or most uh, valuable feature to me that I can uh, take it with me when I go on regional road trips um, or I can mount it in multiple places in my property. The durability of it, um, these Fronius units uh, have proven themselves. Fronius is a uh, global company, obviously been in solar PV for a number of years. Even though these have only been in Australia a short time, they have been in the overseas markets and they've proved themselves to be very durable, so I like that. It's got a reasonable amount of integration with my standalone solar. And I mentioned that I'll show some screenshots in the solar PV app. It will also show you the car charging as part of that app, as well as in the standalone Wattpilot app. Um, so I like that integration. But the other thing is if you're more tech minded and savvy than what I am, you can integrate it with that home assistance quite cheaply. So I think that's a pro. You're only buying what you need. So as I only needed a portable home charger, that's all I bought. So I didn't need this lead. Um, I had this separately made up from somebody else. Um, so you're only paying for what you need and not all this other stuff. So on that note, the cons. So. These aren't really cons, but I guess they're things that um, some people will need to consider more. 
So as you've probably guessed, we had a technical problem and lost sound towards the end of the video, which is disappointing because it's delayed by a week getting this one out. But I wanted to talk about the cons of the Fronius Watt Pilot Go, and we'll also have a look at some screenshots of the car towards the end of its charging, and also show you some Fronius desktop solar stats and how you can pull some reports from the charging. So let's get into the four things which I think are uh, bits of negatives with the Watt Pilot. So firstly the pricing, so it is probably priced a little bit higher for what it is, but like I said, um, you take that as value for money whether you're looking for those sort of unique type uh, functionality and things that the Watt Pilot's got. But some people will look at that and say, look, this is a bit expensive for what it is. Um, the second thing to consider is the lead. So another, again, some people will say that, hey, for that price, it should come with a lead. Um, but what I do like is not having the lead. It's got the flexibility if you've got um, a lead already yourself or you're using a J1771 lead, you need a different lead. Um, you can choose the lead and plug it in yourself. But again, something for people to consider. No screen, so um, I also think that a screen in some cases is valuable because you've got the information quick and easy at hand. You can obviously read it. The Watt Pilot uses LEDs and as we've shown different um, flashing and sequences for the LEDs, so you do just need to get to know what some of those are. And the fourth one, Availability. So Fronius originally only had these available through Fronius dealers and solar installers. They have actually opened that up to some other um, EV charger suppliers and distributors. So they are more widely available now, um, but you can't just go online and buy them at a lot of the um, EV charger uh, online stores etc like you can some of the others so some people uh, will look at that as a bit of a disadvantage as well so they're the four things that I think um, are probably negatives um, but for me personally they're not showstoppers but I do want to put them out there for you to consider now to close the video out I just thought it would be a good idea to show a few screenshots of the solar um, generation and consumption and also some of the stats from the car with temperatures etc. Now these won't necessarily be all on the same day because they've been taken at different days to show different examples but this first one I wanted to show was from the uh, Fronius Solar PV app and that just shows that we're pulling out of our inverter 8.15 kilowatts. Now I mentioned before that I've been really impressed with the robustness of Fronius gear and also I guess the oversizing. So we've got an 8.1 kilowatt inverter and yet you can see in this app that we're actually um, generating and uh, inverting 8.15 kilowatts. So on a nice warm Brisbane summer day that's actually over the rated capacity of the inverter. So that second screenshot there is showing similar sort of stuff. So we're obviously over the eight kilowatts. So it's showing that we're, we've maxed out the um, inverter and it's showing that the self-consumption um, there is just underneath that. So of course we are again sending a little bit to the grid. So it's just another different way to look at it, I guess, in the app. So this one's an app I run to check the stats on the car. So we're charging the car here on the Watt Pilot, of course. We're putting 6.4 kilowatts in. The state of charge of the battery is now 61%. You'll remember earlier on in the video we showed a screenshot we were at 48.2%, so we're charging up. The battery temperature is now 29 degrees. You'll remember earlier in the video it was only 25. And the motor temperature there is showing at 40. Again, that was showing at 25. And the outside temperature, not sure how accurate this one is, that's showing at 24, um, but it's about 32 degrees when this screenshot was taken. So that one may not be so accurate. Here's another screen within the app show it's showing 61.1% state of charge of the battery, putting in 6.4 kilowatts again. The voltage of the battery pack, so this is a high voltage battery pack in the MG, is 418 volts at the moment, and it's putting in 15 amps of current. Now keep in mind that's 15 amps at 418 volts, whereas we're actually putting in around 32 amps at 240 volts from the charger or the EVSE. 
The cell, so the minimum cell voltage within the battery pack is 3.851 and the battery temp again there is 29 and you can have a look at all those other stats. So this is just a bit of info if you're a little bit of a um, stats nerd or you want to know a little bit more about what's going on under the hood when you've got your EV charged or plugged in and charging, these apps show you that information. Here's similar sort of information from a different app. This is the EV Watchdog app, and I'll put the links um, in the show notes for all these apps so you can check them out. Won't go through this one individually. You can have a look at it yourself, but again, it shows similar sort of information. Here's another one from the EV Watchdog app. Uh, this screen here shows the charge and also the state of charge over a time frame. So if you have your car plugged in for four or five hours, this is the sort of graph and information that you'll get. So you can see the uh, kilowatt charging ramped up to about that seven kilowatts. We had a nice sunny day here in Brisbane, so it just sat at seven kilowatts. The sun wasn't going up and down. Um, so it just charged nice and flat at seven kilowatts. And you'll see the second state of charge percentage there. It slowly started to climb. So obviously as the battery was charging up, um, that ramps up. So that was some details and stats on the car while it's charging. We'll quickly now just have a look at the Fronius desktop. So this is the um, solar PV desktop. So this is your over, overview screen. And if you click on the um, four little bubbles, I guess, on the current power, that'll open up and it'll show you the connected devices. So the Watt Pilot's in there and it's um, charging at 4.9 kilowatts it'll show there. The general consumption of the house is 1.2. There's obviously also an energy balance. You can click on that and that brings up a bit more information. Um, but the key thing there is it just shows that the Watt Pilot does actually integrate into the solar PV and it shows some information there. When you click on the energy balance, it'll go into this one. Now this is the production. And you'll see there the power to the grid. So that grey area there, that was before we plugged the Watt Pilot in. So you can see we were pumping all that excess solar energy into the grid. Once we um, plug the Watt Pilot in, that's the purple one there. So you'll see that the Watt Pilot integrates or works really well with the um, smart meter. And it was sucking up all that excess solar PV. So it wasn't putting anything extra into the car from the grid. It was only taking solar. But you can see how that line really matches uh, well. And then the yellow one is um, later in the day when the Watt Pilot actually turned off because it was below 1.4 kilowatts, which is the set, set rate that I've put in there. So when the sun drops down and it can't generate more than 1.4, the Watt Pilot will turn off, go into standby mode, and it'll either send that excess to the grid if we have any, or it'll consume it into the house. Um, the same thing would show if you turn the Watt Pilot off uh, that yellow then would show as going into the house or grey into the grid. The next one there shows very similar information except that I've clicked on the consumption field. So same sort of stuff, just swaps the colours around there a little bit and shows you very similar info. Now what you will notice with those previous couple that I showed, we did have a day when it wasn't so bright. So the sun was coming up and down, up and down and you'll notice that the Watt Pilot uh, consumption was also varying up and down. Whereas in this screenshot, it's similar to the one that I showed in the phone app, this was a really sunny day, so the uh, Watt Pilot charge went up to that sort of six and a half, seven kilowatts and just stayed there. And the production that day was at 34.93 kilowatt hours. Um, but it just wanted to, I wanted to demonstrate the difference between a nice sunny solid day where it just ramps up, hits there and stays in a, in a line, or on the days when the sun's coming out, get, disappearing behind clouds, etc. The Watt Pilot will keep adjusting for that. And that's what you'll see on your desktop view. Now here's a little bit about reporting. So if you actually are one of those reporting nerds or an Excel monkey and you want to download some of this data and keep it and start to track it, this is how you do it. So you go into the uh, reporting section in the settings and you set this up. This is all configurable. There's a whole heap of different information in there that you can report on. Some of it you do need to purchase the premium version of the uh, Fronius 
uh, app. So you'll see there where it says premium, so you do need to pay a monthly fee for that. I don't pay that, so I just um, can select the, the free versions there. So I've configured this to show a few uh, details there. And the main one is the light green power line there. So you'll see that that fluctuates up and down, as I mentioned, where the sun's disappearing behind clouds, etc. So you can graph that, you can download that in Excel, um, and I'll show you how to do that shortly. Um, but you can put that into all sorts of different things. If you hover over those um, lines, so that green line, for instance, you'll, you'll see the data points just on the right-hand side of where it says configured current, power, etc. So you can get very accurate data and details from this. And this screenshot shows how you configure it. So there's a group of selections there and I couldn't get them all in the, the screenshot, but that shows you the options you have. You just tick the different options um, you want. So it is very configurable. And as I mentioned, some of them you need to, to pay to get to, but there is quite a lot of free ones available. And this gives you a bit of an idea of how you export. So you configure the reports you want, um, and then you can export it there, as I said, to lots of different uh, things. You click OK and download it goes. Now I've got two more slides I just wanted to show you guys as an example. So you'll know what to expect if you jump into your solar PV uh, desktop and it says that you need to upgrade to the latest firmware. Now this happened to me recently. So I went to go in and all of a sudden my Wattpilot wasn't showing in the desktop. Um, and it said that I needed to upgrade or uh, refresh the firmware. So look, this is really easy and just if you have a look at that screenshot there, it'll show you the update, tells you the dates when it was done, it tells you the different versions. So if you've got one that's out of date like I recently had, it'll just come up there in red. Um, you select it that you want to update it and you'll get a screen pop up like this. Are you sure you want to run the update? You click yes and away it goes. Now the one that I had to run, it took about 20 minutes. Uh, it updates refreshes, does everything in the background. So as I mentioned with the Wattpilot itself, they have firmware updates which you need to manually trigger. The um, desktop solar PV firmware software also has updates that you need to manually trigger. But as you can just see there, it's really easy to do. And that's the advantage of getting these software updates is that when you buy the product, you're not stuck with the old out of date software. These guys are continually up updating it um, and refreshing it all the time. So guys, if you've made it through to the end of the video, I really appreciate it. This one turned into way, way longer than I thought, but there was a lot of information that I thought uh, was interesting. I've had a lot of comments. There's been a lot of people waiting on this video. They wanted to see lots of different details about the apps and how that worked and looked and the desktop and stuff. So I probably included a lot more stuff in there than I originally intended to. So I do hope it was uh, useful. We've got lots and lots more videos coming, particularly around Fully Charged Live in Sydney. Thanks again to my supporters, really appreciate it. And I look forward to bringing you more videos and shorts over the next few weeks. Thanks for watching, take care, look after your friends and family, and we'll talk soon.